Okay, so now that we've talked about nodal and mesh analysis, how do we decide which is better? So unless a circuit is non-planar, meaning it cannot be drawn on a two-dimensional surface without crossing lines, um, and in that case you have to use nodal analysis, the choice is generally going to depend on what, re what results in the smallest number uh, of equations to be solved simultaneously, the smallest, the minimum system. So a couple things to remember. A supernode reduces KCLs um, in nodal analysis. Um, I, like a super mesh reduces KVLs in mesh analysis. Anytime you see voltage sources, especially those attached to essential nodes, you reduce the number of KCLs in nodal analysis. Current sources reduce the number of KVLs in mesh analysis. So in general, we're going to follow a, a procedure to figure this out. And you'll get better at this, but you should try to do this each time you encounter a problem. So when evaluating whether or not nodal analysis is the right choice, in general, the number of KCLs you're going to write is going to be the number of essential nodes you have, minus 1. That minus 1 is due to the ground. Minus the number of known voltages. This is due to voltage sources attached to essential nodes. So, in other words, it's a known. You don't have to do a KCL there. And then minus the number of supernodes you have. And for mesh, the number of KCLs that you're going to have to write is the number of meshes you have minus any known mesh currents. Those are due to um, current sources and then minus any super meshes you have, and those are current sources that um, join two meshes together. And in both cases, you're going to have additional equations if you have a super mesh or super node, and those are your constraints. Those are very basic equations usually, so you know I usually don't consider them as a part of that analysis. And also plus any equations for dependent variables that you might have. And anytime you have a dependent variable, um, you're writing those variables in terms of either your nodal voltages for nodal analysis or your mesh currents for mesh analysis. Okay, so let's employ this kind of basic analysis technique to solve the problem. Okay, so in this example, let's use either nodal or mesh analysis to solve the problem. So let's do our basic evaluation before we start. If we were going to do nodal, let's note that we have one, two, three, four essential nodes. Actually, let me back up and write explicitly that the number of KCLs is going to equal our four essential nodes minus one. And note that none of those essential nodes are attached to a voltage source and there does not exist a super node. So that is equal to three KCLs. Okay. We, of course, in this problem have two dependent sources. So that's two dependent variables. So we will have two additional equations for the dependent variables. But that's going to be common in mesh and nodal analysis. Okay, so if we did mesh analysis, the number of KVLs is going to equal one, two, three meshes. Look at the first order. Um, note that um, if we call these meshes A, B, and C, A and B are related to each other by this current source, so that's a super mesh. B and C are related to each other by this current source, so that's a super mesh. Therefore, A is related to C via B, so this entire thing is a super mesh. So we have two super meshes. So that equals one KVL expression, super mesh A, B, and C. So we do have the two constraints of those super mesh equations, but again, those are simpler equations. And then we might even, and then we also may have the two dependent variables. 
um, requiring additional equations. So in either case, there's five equations, but the, th the, the ones that are the com complex ones that you're usually there to consider are the KCLs and K KVLs. So in this case, I would choose mesh analysis because of the, the smaller number of KVL expressions required. Okay, so we're going to choose mesh and we're going to do a KVL of super mesh A, B, and C. So first thing we need to do is define our mesh currents. Define mesh A is IA, IB, and IC all going clockwise. So when I do my KVL, I'm going to start at the bottom left corner. First thing I do is traverse through 193 volts from negative to positive, so that's a plus 90, 193 volt gain. I'd go through the 4 ohm resistor, so minus 4 ohms times the current, which is IA. Then jumping over to mesh 2, I go through the 2.5 ohm resistor times current IB. Sorry, there's a typo right here, IB. Okay, moving into mesh C, we have minus 2 ohms times mesh current IC minus the voltage dropped across the dependent source, which is 0 0.8 V0, minus 8 ohms times mesh current IC, moving back into mesh B, minus 7.5 ohms times mesh current IB, and back into mesh A, minus 6 ohms times mesh current IA, all equal to zero. So one long equation for super mesh A, B, and C. Note that we have unknowns IA, IB, and IC, and V not appearing. So how do we solve this with just this one KVL? Well, we have to write the constraints and the de dependent variable relationships. So the constraints are the, the relationships between each mesh. So for example, for the first source, 0.4 Vx, it's a current source, that relates mesh A and B. Same direction as mesh current IB, opposite direction of IA, so that's constraint number one. In other words, super mesh constraint AB. So for, for super mesh constraint BC, we have current source 0 0.5 amps. That's going to be comprised of IC and IB in the fashion shown here, IC minus IB. And we have our equations for our dependent variables. Our first dependent variable is Vx. Vx needs to be expressed in terms of our mesh currents. Vx appears across this 2 ohm resistor in the top right corner, so it's therefore going to be related to IC. IC is the only current going through that 2 ohm source, so we can write Vx in terms of Ohm's law as being equal to IC times 2 ohms. Our second dependent variable is V0. V0 appears across this current source, this dependent current source. So in order to figure this out, we're going to need to write a KVL of mesh A. Only way to do it, because we don't have a nice Ohm's Law relationship for the voltage across a source. So writing a KVL of mesh A, we can get that dependent variable relationship. So that's plus 193 volts, minus 4 ohms times IA, minus V naught, minus 6 ohms times IA equals zero, and we're done. So one, uh, one, two, three, four, five total equations, five total unknowns, and this is solvable. And if you take that system of five equations and solve it, you get the following solution. So in conclusion, I highly re recommend that you go back and solve this problem again, perhaps with nodal analysis. And even with nodal analysis, you can choose different ground uh, reference nodes. Um, and, and solve for the solution uh, and check check that Vx and V0 in all of those cases is identical. And that would ensure your um, proficiency in nodal analysis. Um, if you solve it again with mesh analysis, perhaps choose different directions for your mesh currents.
Um, note that when you do that, your signs are going to change, but the solution again for Vx and Vnaught, since they're defined as voltage potential across elements, those are going to be identical.